somebody asked me a question that can you share some of the secrets about transits which we may not find generally in the internet or in astrology courses so here i will try to explain in short how exactly we should be using transits and combining it with the dashas of course because we all know that the transits are secondary the most important thing in our life is the dashas which means what happens in our life at the end what we feel what we see what we face what we get or what we lose is not dependent on the transit it is but it is primarily dependent on the dasha that that principle has to be very clearly understood there is no ambiguity about that now the question is what does transits do what does it mean when you say that a planet is transiting in a particular house for you or for me or for somebody else and how to use it all right so that is what we will try to see here and as usual if you are new then like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me regarding your transits or your dashas then you could go down to my website below in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you so now everybody has a horoscope and then the dashas are calculated now there are different dasha systems about which i will make videos later what is a dasha basically dasha is as they say na in uh, sanskrit or in hindi they, they say sometimes that aapki durdasha chal rahi hai durdasha means dur means bad negative or that which takes things away from you so durdasha means it's like a bad dasha you can say <laughs> negative which you do not like which you don't want so dasha is basically everything that happens to you good bad now how is dasha calculated vimshotri dasha we all know that when moon when you are born the nakshatra where moon is from there the vimshotri dasha is calculated all right the zodiac and the nakshatra but the thing is no body no two people in this entire world will have the same dashas nobody now you may say oh my moon is uh, in revati nakshatra his moon is also in revati so we were both born in mercury mahadasha how do you say that we will not have the same dashas well because you may be having moon in revati but your moon will be in a different pada 1 2 3 4 it will be conjunct some other planet it will be aspected by some other planet moon in your horoscope will rule a different house depending on your ascendant then there will be different planets sitting in the sign of cancer yes the planet sitting in the sign of cancer will also mold the effects of the moon because moon is the dispositor of all the planets so now that is how you calculate the dasha so everybody in this entire universe will have a different dasha which means everybody will face different situations in life no two people will ever 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 face the same situation no two people and now what are transits transits are used to see exactly when that event is going to happen so for example let's take venus mahadasha venus mahadasha is very long 20 years and within that the antar dashas are also very long so venus venus is almost 3 years and within that the pratyantar which is the third level is even very long sometimes venus 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 many months so let's take an example suppose somebody is a scorpio lagna it's an easy example that's why i'm using that scorpio lagna that means venus is the lord of the 7th house and venus is placed in the sign of sagittarius in purva shada nakshatra and where is sagittarius for scorpio it is the second house so now 
Venus as the seventh lord is sitting in the second house. And it is also in its own nakshatra because Purva Ashada is ruled by Venus himself. So that means Venus is lording the second uh, seventh house of marriage and sitting in the second house of family. Which means during the dasha of Venus, there are high, high, high chances that if the person is between the age of 23 in India and around 30, 32 in India within this 10 year range, most of the weddings take place. Then it could be possible that the person has the event of the wedding. Now the question is, Within those six months, Venus, 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 or three months or four months or how, however long the Pratyantar is, when will that event happen? When will the person get married? You cannot just say, okay, for example, now it's April. You cannot say that, okay, you will get married till October. Okay, you could still say that. But the thing is, how will you narrow it down more? That is where you will use transits. Now, then what will happen? When prominent planets will travel to the houses concerning the dashas, then the event happens. So that means now, in that case of a Scorpio ascendant, when planets will transit the second house, when, when will the planets transit second house? Second house is Sagittarius. That means... The, the slow moving planet, uh, the fast moving planets, I mean. So, which are the fast moving planets? Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and Moon. And Moon is the fastest, so we cannot consider it because it keeps going very fast. So, at least we can take Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. So, now the question is think around when, suppose this is Scorpio ascendant who has this placement, seventh lord Venus in the second house in Purvashada. So now, and suppose all the other indications are saying that, yes, you will get married. Now the question is when, how will you time the marriage? There you use transit. So now calculate. If Sun, Mercury, Venus has to be in the second house, then when that will happen? Because Sun, Mercury, Venus are always nearer to each other. And Sun enters Sagittarius when? 15 December. So that means... On December 15 or nearby that date, there is one possibility of that event happening. Number one. Number two, you have to see regarding that event, which are the other houses which could also give that event. Which means the houses of marriage are second house, seventh house and eleventh house and to some extent the fifth and the ninth also but not primarily. So that means now if these planets transit the 7th house or the 11th house for a Scorpio Lagna, even then the event of wedding can happen. Now the question is, when will they transit the 7th house? For Scorpio, as I said, Taurus is the 7th house. When does Sun enter Taurus? 15th of May, Sun enters Taurus and Mercury Venus will also enter around that time, before or after. So that means, now you know, the Dasha is telling, suppose in April it's starting, so six months right venus 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 around that uh, april may june july august september so you have time till september then now you have narrowed it down to may so then you have seen oh my god mars will also be in taurus i mean it's in taurus but after some days it will go to gemini so forget mars let's just take a uh, sun mercury and venus now what is the next step the finer step Step. just check where moon is now see for suppose uh, sun mercury venus will be in taurus for suppose 10 15 days now how will you say that among those 10 15 days that event will happen this is how events happen in life it doesn't just happen out of the blue it exactly happens like this then you have to check the placement of moon so now suppose among those 15 days when Sun, Mercury and Venus are sitting in the sign of Taurus for Scorpio Lagna in the 7th house. Then you have to see when is Moon transiting the 2nd, 7th or the 11th house. 
so moon will transit sagittarius two days two two and a half days then two two and a half days taurus the seventh house and then you also have to check for the eleventh house okay so that means whenever moon will transit these three houses within the period when the three planets the slow the fast moving planets sun mercury venus will also be in these three houses one of these three houses two seven and eleven then that is the day when the event of wedding will take place all right this is how you have to narrow things down otherwise you will just give predictions in the air so now let's take another example this was a very good example it was a very easy example but most of the charts you will not find like this so now suppose somebody's uh, chart is indicating that it's a great time for career suppose let's take the example of aries lagna aries lagna saturn in the fifth house saturn in leo for example now saturn mahadasha is running it has just started for example so the person is running saturn 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 so saturn is the lord of the 10th house and the 11th house for aries lagna mind it and then saturn is also posited in the fifth house so house wise it is great fantastic it is that means during the period of saturn any antardasha or specifically mahadasha there will be great name and fame and status unanimously it has to be there now name and fame is indicated but the question is when will it happen because saturn 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 is also very long because saturn mahadasha is of 19 years then you have to see when are these planets transiting in the relevant houses of fame so which are the houses which are relevant to fame the lagna the ascendant that's very important for fame because lagna is the self your image then the second house because it's the house of money then the fifth house then to some extent the sixth house but you can ignore it for time being then the tenth house and the eleventh house so primarily these five houses are the house of name and fame you can also include the sixth house but among all these the lagna the tenth and the eleventh houses these three houses are the most powerful houses of name and fame so that means now suppose just recently saturn 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 started all right so now what's happening sun mercury is in uh, sorry uh, mercury venus is in pisces now and sun is already in aries because for aries lagna aries is the first house so that means you have to check when does these planets they transit uh aries or capricorn or aquarius because these are the houses 1 10 and 11 so that means now the planets mercury venus they are just about to enter the sign of aries very soon they are going to enter and on 4th may this year 2019 there is a new moon so that is the day when sun moon mercury all three will be in aries's first house so that is the day you can predict that you will get a promotion or you will get a job or something big will happen in your life why not because the transits are indicating because the dasha is indicating that all right so this is how you can pinpoint events to the day you can pinpoint you don't have to wait for some fancy stuff in astrology it's very simple if you know the dasha what the dasha is indicating you can do it to the day i have seen and there are other finer levels to this which you can include which i will discuss some other time all right there you go i hope you understood how to use transits to pinpoint events of your life all right so if you are new to the channel and if you are not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know when when is the day this will happen that will happen and yes i forgot to say one thing this will also hold true for the negative stuff which means if there is an indication that there will be a downfall in your career 
or you'll be insulted or something of that sort then when moon is transiting the dusthana house the 6th 8th and the 12th or when you know sun mercury venus mars these planets are transiting 6 8 12 then the defamy can happen and the day when moon also joins these houses that's like the trigger that is the day some of your secrets could be exposed all right so this works for everything any good event any bad event in life so when you are going through this be a bit careful because sometimes you can uh, make some unnecessary predictions for yourself and for somebody unnecessary doesn't mean it's wrong but uh, some things which are not required for example you know when you will die or these kind of unnecessary things because what what good will you do by knowing when will you die because the scriptures say that you should think every moment that the next moment you are going to die because then every moment you will remember lord ram or lord krishna yes so that's the point here that use it judiciously with intelligence and know when to speak what to whom just do not go on speaking things blindly all right that's my request and yes if you want a consultation from me you could go down to the description section where you'll find the link to my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him